Hey guys, welcome to Collider Movie Talk, movie talk for movie fans. I'm your host, Ashley Mova, and this is The Daily Show, where we give you all of the latest news from the world of movies, plus some insight into what it all means. Leading off the show today is Mark Ellis. Greetings and welcome one and all to the greatest movie news show in the entire galaxy. And occasionally, we not only like to celebrate the world of movies, we like to drop some very, very special announcements about us, your crew, on this very show. <laughs> Ashley, who's joining us for this most exciting episode? Well, Dennis Zen's also here. Hello, everyone. I heard a rumor that all Pixar movies going forward are all going to be rated R. Ooh, uh, yep. Also here, Christian Harlow. Give Pixar back to Marvel. Uh, <laughs> what's going on? Mark loves Puss in Boots. Uh, I love <laughs> Puss in Boots. Something else. The cutest cat of all time. And <laughs> while we're going to be on here gushing about various news stories, some Wolverine stuff, maybe a Puss in Boots story breaks, I hope. About 30, 45 minutes into the show, we're going to be joined by some guy named John Campia right here at the desk for a very special announcement or a series of announcements so make sure you guys buckle up because we're about to set the internet on fire until that happens we have some pretty cool movie news to talk about Ashley what's up first well with studios taking note of the surprising box office success of Deadpool rumors abound of other comic book movie properties that could also get an R rating while properties like X-Force and Spawn are still conceptual Hugh Jackman's The Wolverine is a definite go and will be released in 2017 but what will be it be rated if a pamphlet at Toy Fair in New York City is to be believed, it could follow in Deadpool's footsteps and be rated R. However, Fox Studios has not made an official announcement on the rating, and the film has yet to begin principal photography. Dennis, will Wolverine end up being rated R? I actually think it will be. I'm not sure if this pamphlet is real or not, but I think they haven't started production yet, and then with the success of Deadpool, I think Fox is going to look. All right, let's let's do it. And I think people misinterpreted me yesterday in in thinking that I don't want R-rated comic book movies. I'm totally fine with that. I just don't need them to be shoehorned in. I don't. I don't. I think. Wolverine can be one that they do right as long as they don't make him into Deadpool. They don't have him dropping, you know, all the, I mean, I know he cusses, but like, like he doesn't have that irreverent humor that Deadpool has. I don't want him to be like all jokey and stuff like that. And I know some people are like, well, Dennis, don't worry about that. Uh, <laughs> studios, they're not going to do that. It's like, really? The studios don't do anything where they follow the trends and make money. Remember what happened with Avatar? <laughs> Avatar is a movie that I enjoyed, but it was in 3D. Guess what happened? All the movies afterwards <laughs> were all in 3D. So saying that, oh, no, no, studios will, will, will pick and choose. You're, I think you're giving them a little bit more credit than they deserve. Uh, but in, in terms of a Wolverine movie, if it, it's Radar, it's Old Man Logan or something like that, I'm fine with that. You know, as Ashley pointed out, this news kind of broke at Toy Fair, and that was also coupled with Todd McFarlane talking about Spawn, and my thought is, I really was born too early. I used to play with toys all the time. There was never a goddamn movie announcement about your He-Man toys or your G.I. <laughs> Joe toys. Now, that's where you get all the Star Wars scoops, all these other scoops about toys are coming to play ball, and maybe it's the case with Wolverine being rated R, but I tend to agree with you, Dennis. I don't think this is anything to get all your panties in a bunch about. I don't think that they have a firm rating yet. Why? Because they haven't even started shooting the movie. Hugh Jackman has been working very closely with James Mangold on the script. They have something that they're very excited to shoot. Now, the way that they shot the Wolverine was that, hey, you know what? Uh, we're going to shoot this thing, and then if it gets to be rated R, fine. If it gets to be rated PG-13, we'll deal with it. And what they actually did is that it was released PG-13, and then on the Blu-ray, you can watch the special R-rated edition. My my take on it is that that's the way it's going to happen with this one because Deadpool had such a confluence of events that needed it to be rated R, and I don't think Wolverine has that. It's going to be very violent. I think you can get away with a lot of violence. Hugh Jackman might want to show his ass occasionally, and that's about it. There's not going to be a lot of dirty, raunchy sex jokes in there. I don't know that Wolverine's claws are going to make the same impact as a bullet ripping through three skulls and seeing it in graphic detail at the same time. So I don't think, as of right now, this new Wolverine movie is going to be rated R. Christian you're the tiebreaker. You're shaking your head. What are you going with? F you guys. We're getting a hardcore radar. <laughs> and I'll tell you what. We're going to see the snickney snickney. Let's see him wreck shop. Like there was an old school meltdown was the name of the comic. And it was between, it was Havoc and Wolverine. And it was bloody. It was great. I don't care about the the super, the, the nudity and, and the, the cursing. That doesn't need to be Wolverine. It needs to be Wolverine slashing and so, totally just going bananas. There was a glimpse of it in X2. It's a glimpse of it when, he, when he's in, in, in the, the mansion and he just takes out those the cops and that is what I want to see. I want to see that entire movie with just 
balls to the wall what the comic book when they really went to the R level I'd like to see one for the adults they can go back when they do X-Men Days of Future Past and all that stuff they can give that that's the PG-13 and it should stay there but give me the rated R Wolverine I think it's going to happen and I think because of Deadpool it would have never happened without Deadpool but now Yes, give it to me. You make a great point because the template of Deadpool showed that you can take a character and make his individual movie rated R and then he can play in a larger universe that is not rated R. So maybe Wolverine takes a cue from that. And plus, we're not going to see a, lot, a whole lot more Wolverine after this movie comes out. So this might be Wolverine's send-off. Would you really want Wolverine's send-off to be rated R if you're a studio exec? Look, me, Mark Ellis, the fan, I'm totally with mm -hmm. you, boys. I want to see Wolverine be as dirty and as gory. I'll see an NC-17 Wolverine movie just based on the violence. But at the end of the day, if you make a cut of a film and you show it to somebody and the MPAA says, hey, you guys might need to tweak this, might need to get that blood out of there to make it PG-13, all the dollars that I think studio execs might still think are going to come from changing the rating might be a factor. I still I, wouldn't mind if it's rated R. I just don't think it needs to be like Deadpool did. If this was two weeks ago, I would have maybe agreed with you more. But now because exactly what Dennis is saying, the way the studio execs kind of sit around and say, well, wait a minute. What did the last Wolverine, that's what I'm curious about. What did the last Wolverine uh, Mangles open up to? What was the opening to? Because if that, even if it's the last Wolverine standalone movie, they're still going to compare those numbers. Mm -hmm. But then when you look at what Deadpool did at a rated R and say, okay, maybe we can just take the handcuffs off Wolverines and, and let's see what happens because obviously people are going to see the rated R and there's a rated R comic book audience. It's not just the 13 and under, too. I think that if you give one to the, you know, for the rated R crowd and you give one to the PG-13 back and forth, I think it could work. But you're absolutely right that there it comes to that trend where it's like everything should be rated yeah. R now. But it worked for Deadpool. Yeah. It's like don't you, you got to be careful. But Wolverine to me is one that could fit. Yeah, if the he, mold. yeah, and then Old Man Logan. If they do, I think they may do a variation on that. They're not going to do exactly what the comic book was. They may do that. Oh, the one thing I'm disappointed at though is if they do a rated R movie, that Darren Aronofsky is still is not attached to <laughs> it. You know? know, like when he was previously attached, I think. One of the things is he said that he didn't want to go like on this film for so long and be away from his family. But I think there was like side rumors of like, no, he was fighting with Fox. He wanted something more of a hard R and, and they wanted PG-13. And now that they are possibly doing an R-rated movie and he's off of it. Maybe you flip the script and you make this, unlike the last movie, you make this one rated R in theaters. Then you have a PG-13 <laughs> cut on Blu-ray right. for the kids at home. Ashley, what's up next? Last week, it was revealed that June 2018 would indeed bring us a new Transformers film, but it will not be Transformers 6. Instead, it will be a smaller movie in the universe centering on Bumblebee, according to Paramount CEO Brad Gray. There are characters in the Transformers universe that can be and should be made into their own movies. We will make the first movie with Michael and go right into a Bumblebee movie, which will be at a lower cost. As of now, no director or writers have been attached to the project. Christian, is this smaller Bumblebee movie a good idea? I don't know. I don't, I don't know. It's like they're trying to do like the shared universe. And it's like I, I just can't tell with with. with yeah, it's, I that can't. was the greatest answer in the history of movie talk. I mean, you got these notes at 8 a.m. this morning. I mean, I know you had three story, hours to ruin I know what the story this. is, but I mean, it's like, who the hell knows that the Bumblebee movie with Michael Bay attached is going to be good? I mean, come on. Christian, Christian's two favorite franchises are Transformers and the, the, the Jai Chipmunks. Courtney, no, uh, the, the Chipmunks. Chip um, <laughs> they should cross over and we should see that movie. With Jai Courtney as Bumblebee. They have. It's fantastic. called the Shitformers. It was the last one. Um, it, uh, look, I, I don't know, man. I mean, if, if it was... When they originally said like Stephen Knight and all these guys were coming together in the, in this writing room, and I was like, cool. And then uh, Michael Bay is still directing. Boo! And then now they're gonna do a standalone Bumblebee movie. Okay, but what's it gonna look like? Like, who, what is it still gonna follow this? It's hard right now because four movies in, I don't care about this franchise, and it's still making a lot of money. I get a headache every time I watch it. The trailer tricks me every damn time. But when I go in there. On a standalone movie, is this their way to kind of maybe give new directors a take? If a brand new director comes in and does it, then yeah, I might get excited about it. But right now, I just there's too big of a stink on it. You're right. New directors could get a shot at making a Transformers movie that we actually want to see. But more importantly, that's what that writers' room when when Akiva Goldsman headlined that thing, and you had guys like you said, Christian, mm -hmm. Stephen Knight came in. They had all these great shared ideas, and then they find out Michael Bay is coming back to direct it, and he probably doesn't really care about what those genius writers came up with. He just wants to blow stuff up and drink Bud Light. But if all those guys have cool ideas going forward, maybe you can employ them in a Bumblebee movie. Now look, am I that excited to see Bumblebee in particular be the headliner of a movie? Not necessarily, but to
the fact that Michael Bay is going to be stepping away and not directing that, and it could be a smaller story, which I think we can all agree, as much as I love seeing the Transformers on screen and the effects look great and some of the fight scenes are okay, it would be nice to see a smaller story told in that universe where not everything is about 1,900 galaxies yeah. coming together to have this epic battle. Let's just have an adventure with Transformers. I think this would be the right way to go, at least in comparison to the huge Michael Bay franchise. I don't think it's a good idea, but I think it's going to make some money. I'm not Transformers money, but good enough. Yeah. My question, though, is here you have this character, Bumblebee, at least in, in terms of the movie franchise, not the, the cartoon or the animated series, that in the first movie didn't even speak, right? Right. And then the, the next three movies, I don't even remember what he, he did. He talked in songs. Yeah, like yeah. I don't remember anything other than he, was, he transformed into a cool car. Yeah. So, you know, you guys always have this debate on Jedi Council. You guys talking about spin-off anthology movies. Oh man, should Han Solo have a spin-off movie? Have, should Obi-Wan, should Yoda, blah, blah, right, blah. Right. It's like, those characters are like beloved and have like huge backstories and history to them. And Bumblebee, and, and as far as the movie's concerned, has nothing. <laughs> right. So why are they making a movie out of them? That's, that's my thing. I they're mean, I, 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 they're, yeah. they're reaching. I, I, but I hate playing the studio head in two stories in a row, but it's like, if you're Paramount, that is your franchise. You know, well, that I got is Mission Impossible you, you, and you, Star Trek. Mission Impossible, which we don't know how much gas Tom Cruise is going to have yeah. left in the tank. Star Trek, fans didn't love that show. Transformers is the most bankable property they have. Maybe Ready yeah, Player One, which they just acquired, is going to do something maybe they can revive indiana jones but until that time comes christian it's we're going to be stuck with transformers movies and maybe this is the best version of those stop it <laughs> okay ashley let's cheer christian up the first trailer for the april film bastille day has been released the movie stars idris elba and richard madden from game of thrones the pair play americans in paris where madden's pickpocket character is targeted by elba's cia agent but after bringing him in elba learns madden is simply a pawn in a much bigger conspiracy game mark what's your take on the new trailer for bastille day my take is i had no idea this movie was coming out and now i'm pretty <laughs> locked in i don't know if this is just going to be a great action movie to watch on cable or if it's actually going to be something I line up to see opening weekend. But look, dude, you put Elba in there. And Richard Madden is a guy who sometimes if you're a great actor on TV and we really like that character, it doesn't always work in the transition to the big screen, as any of the males from Lost can attest to. However, Bastille Day, this tri it looked like a plot we've seen before. There's a CIA guy on the run. They're going to use a criminal to actually do some good once in a while. So watching the trailer, it didn't seem like it was breaking anything uh, as far as new ground goes in the action round. But look, dude, I love Idris Elba, and it's nice to see him in a role like this playing off Richard Madden. Christian, what do you think? I loved this trailer, man. I loved it because this is exactly what I want to see Idris Elba doing. Like, I want to see him in these roles. And this is also, it's to have but th this cast, it's, it, they didn't go with two stars that you just could have gotten easily. I'm like, oh, it's just a generic uh, movie. And I think that also remind me a little bit of what we're, we saw in The Nice Guys. Uh, a little different, but the same t type of premise is the one guy who's kind of recruited by the badass. And, and it, it looks like it, it's working. It looks like to me that the, the chemistry is there. I like both the actors. A different role for um, for the King of the North, which I thought was pretty awesome too, because uh, he's he just he was really good in Cinderella. Yeah. Also, he was really good in that movie, and I think that he's a really great actor. And to see what he's able to do against Idris Elba, this to me seems like it's it's like a movie that will fly under the radar, I think. I think it's not going to be a big blockbuster movie. If it even does well, who knows? But I think it's got a potential to be one of those movies that we're talking about. We have potential that it could be something like, oh, did you see that? That, that was one of the greatest action movies I've seen. And blah, blah, because of that, dude. Idris Elba is a movie star. And to see him get more and more roles like this in the lead, I'm going to buy it. I, it, I like it, it. It's yeah. an older action star. It could be this year's Taken. And Dennis, maybe Edris Elba never gets to play James Bond, but maybe playing an American CIA agent is his answer to that. Uh, it's a big buy for me. I like the trailer. Yeah, it's nothing new we haven't seen before. Yeah. There's even like shades. It's not going to... It's not going to be as good as something like Midnight Run, but you have that that kind of law enforcement with with the petty criminal aspect of it. Idris Elba, I'm a huge fan of. Yeah, maybe this is like an audition for James Bond. Like maybe if this movie does well and people like him in this role, they're like, okay, maybe we can see him as as that character. Um, I, I like that scene where where uh, they're in the I think the holding cell or whatever and he asks him to 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 steal his wallet from him and he goes up to him and he's like oh i still have it and he's like yeah but you don't have your money or whatever <laughs> I, I don't know yeah. I, for some reason this this gelled with me i think it is the chemistry between those two characters i'm gonna say it's like a combo of catch me if you can yeah. i got a little bit of the rock in there and i got some lethal weapon too all right yeah, yeah sure <laughs> 
We're on board. <laughs> right. Hey, it's not a Transformers Bumblebee movie. Hey. <laughs> now we've come to that portion of the show called Buy or Sell. It's very simple. Ashley is going to present us gentlemen with a topic, and we're simply going to say whether we buy it or sell it, and then we'll defend our argument. Ashley, what's up first? Well, gentlemen, back in Whoa. 2014, <laughs> we first got word that Iron Man 3 and Kiss Kiss Bang Bang director Shane Black would be working on a new Predator film. Not much had been heard since then until now. A new promo poster has been unveiled, and it appears the title will be simply The Predator. It's still very early in the process. The movie has yet to get a release date or cast, but Christian, do you buy or sell this first look at The Predator? It's so weird because I'm going to buy it because I know Shane Black is involved with it and he was involved in the first movie and, and he... And I don't know if it's a if it's a continuation of the first Predator and they're going to retcon everything else. I have no idea what this is about, but it could be like if Shane Black was never involved and that same poster came with some fan art or, or you bowl is doing it again. I'd be like, I, 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 I would say, you know, <laughs> you know what? Sell it because it's just fan art. Um, but I'm buying it because I'm excited for the possibility. The, like to know what the pre, first Predator is one of my favorite movies of all time, and it was and Shane Black had a lot to do with it with the script and he was in the movie and and I I think that to see the way he's going to continue the story gets me excited so I'm going to buy it. Dennis, you like to go to Vegas every so often. Are you taking the Predator poster with you? Yes, I'm buying this as well. I like the tagline too. You'll never see him coming. Um, yeah, Shane Black. I didn't even realize that he was in the movie, yeah. and so I, I feel like he's going to have an extra passion to do this and do it do it right and you know i liked iron man 3 i like kiss kiss bang bang and nice guys looks like it's going to be good as well yeah. so I, i'm definitely excited for this one it's a huge buy for me it's not quite as huge a buy as it would have been had i just laid eyes on it it's been like yes new predator movie because i started thinking about the tagline you'll never see him coming and i was like oh well wait maybe that's just him borrowing the line from the mandarin mm -hmm. in iron man 3 so wait is this whole thing a joke wait 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 what's happening here they don't have a cast they don't even have a production schedule yet i've been had but then you do know that shane Black is involved in this movie somehow he's going to be making it and appears from this poster that maybe that production schedule has been upped a little bit because our appetite is wet for a new Predator movie. Will Arnold have a cameo? He's got to. I hope so. He's got to. But, you know, you also you? bring up the, the premise of them retconning everything that's happened in Predator so far, at least Predator 2 through now. I really enjoyed that Predators movie, the one with Adrian Brody. I thought it was really well done. It was a neat story. You don't have to take it and make a sequel to that, although you could maybe have Arnold be in there somewhere because I think the timelines would sync up to where an older Arnold could lend his veteran alien hunting experience right. to whatever new crew is going after the Predator, but we have no idea about anything. Is it going to take place on that planet? Is it going to be back on Earth? Just so you guys know, we're very excited about a poster here. Ashley, what's next? <laughs> the latest film from Blumhouse Productions is another addition to a horror franchise. This time, that evil house from upstate New York is back in Amityville, The Awakening. When a family moves into the infamous residence, creepy things start to happen, especially ones involving their bedridden son. Jennifer Jason Lee and Bella Thorne star. Dennis, buy or sell this first trailer for Amityville, The Awakening. I'm going to sell it. Not that, I, <laughs> not, that I not that it looks terrible or anything. Just, you know, you know horror is not my genre. And the thing Things that I'm more interested in is, is something like The Witch that's coming out this weekend where it's more of a creep, creepy atmosphere vibe to it where this there was nothing different that I saw in this trailer that I hadn't seen in other trailers for horror movies. You know, that that one part where he lifts over the body and the insects come out, that was kind of gross or whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm glad that Jennifer Jason Lee is getting more work. She was great in Hateful Eight, so that part but as far as the movie's concerned uh, yeah I'm not interested yeah to quote veteran public speaker Christian Harloff I don't know <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna have to sell this trailer too and look the Amityville story itself is just so creepy and intriguing and I want to see it done right again on the big screen they swung and missed with that Ryan Reynolds version where he had the weird beard and this one it just looks like look Blumhouse is really good at taking franchises making small movies on tiny budgets and getting a good opening weekend out of them and sometimes those movies movies end up being really good and getting traction and getting fans involved. Other times you get like a, I don't know, sequel that you're thinking, God, this was just a cash grab because they put a name on there like Sinister 2. That was just a cash grab. We we love Sinister, so we want to go see it again. And they just ripped us off, at least in my opinion. <laughs> so Amity, The Awakening. We know Amityville. We've heard of Amityville. It just seems like they're going after my wallet. 
Yeah, uh, sell it and then give someone <laughs> the, who you sell it to your bunk phone number. So when they try to get a refund, you're not picking up. This movie looks terrible. Uh, it's this cliched crap. It's cliched. It's the same thing. It's like the bugs flying into the guy's mouth, and uh, the best part is that that's that he's from RoboCop and and and, and the '70s show. That was the best part about the whole damn trailer. It looks. It, it's. Bella Thorne doesn't know what she's doing in the movie. Jennifer Jason Lee, this is where we go from Hateful Eight. It's like, yeah, it's nice to see she's working again, but this is the movie. It looked like just the same generic. And the fact that it's getting a theatrical release is, is only because Blumhouse is doing it. Otherwise, that's a direct to DVD. The Amityville itself, the first story, is creepy, but no one needs to see more of this. It's just like, oh, let's make a budget, uh, five million, and hopefully we can make eight million, and then we rip everybody off, and that's exactly <laughs> what's going to happen. You know, I had the pleasure of being in a haunted house this weekend, and I think maybe it's time to get rid of the Amityville one. We're done with upstate New York. I was at the Whaley House in San Diego this past weekend. It's the most haunted house in the entire country. They have photos you can look at of people like, like tourists have taken pictures of the house, and you can see specters in there and stuff. Make a movie about the Whaley House, Blumhouse. House. Garbage. Do that. Garbage. Well, we're done with buy and sell, but now it's time for, as John Campia so eloquently states, the feeling old segment. It's Wednesday, so we're doing our AMC Rewind section. These are the movies that came out 10 years ago this weekend. So we got Eight Below, starring Paul Walker. We have Date Movie, which was a spoof of Date Movies, and Freedom Land, starring Samuel L. Jackson and Julianne Moore. My God, it was February 10 years ago, wasn't it? <laughs> and 20 years ago, these are the movies that came out. The all-time classic, We Miss You, Adam Sandler. Happy Gilmore. We also had Muppet Treasure Island. Mr. Wrong in a movie that Ellen DeGeneres still makes fun of to this day and City Hall starring Al Pacino, John Cusack, and Bridget Fonda before they found a life in direct-to-DVD movies. Okay, so, Dennis, I'm going to throw it to you first. Which of all these movies stand out to you? Well, there's only one that I've actually <laughs> seen, which is Happy Gilmore, and that just you know reminds me of the kind of the golden era of Adam Sandler. Mm -hmm. He did Billy Madison, Happy Gilmore, Wedding Singer, uh, Water Boy, and then uh, Big Daddy. Right. That, for me, that, that was a nice run for him. Now he's doing blended in pixels so kind of kind of a different uh, different uh take on that um mr wrong i didn't see it but that was i remember that was before ellen degeneres came out and they were trying to sell yeah. her as um like a heterosexual romantic lead female and and then i think maybe I don't know how long after that she, she came out. So uh, If you can't get feelings for Lone Star, it's just not going to happen for anyone. Christian, I know you're a huge fan of Al Pacino. Yeah. Did you see City Hall in the theater? I certainly did. Did you really? I, I, went, I went opening night, actually, uh, <laughs> and it was disappointing. It's just boring, uh, you know, why, especially because I like John Cusack a lot. Bridget Fonda was, was hot at the time, and, and I remember seeing uh, and just going for Pacino because I've been a Pacino fan forever, and I can't even tell you kind of what it's about. It was so bored out of my mind. I remember telling myself, Come on, like it. It's Pacino. And I just remember going to sleep. Um, but Happy Gilmore. It's got to be Happy Gilmore. It's the one that it was like his second movie. It was the one that everybody kind of remembers that he had two back to back when he started becoming like this comedy superstar. And it's a real, it's still, it still holds up. And if Carl Weathers in that, in that movie is amazing. Oh, yeah. Chubbs. It's just, it, it, there's so much to love in Happy Gilmore. It's such a quotable movie. Grizzly Adams did, in fact, have a beard. And when I look at the movies that came out 10 years ago, it's just nothing stands out. Although I was surprised to see that Eight Below, which is Paul Walker and Sled Dogs, made almost 80 million dollars i remember the that i remember office. it did really well and it's like look if you yeah. if, if if you're in a month like february where there's not a lot of good stuff coming out you put a hot star on the rise and you put cute doggies in there the movie's gonna make money but like everybody at home i know that there's some some younger people watching this show you know adam sandler from movies like pixels or click something like that if you haven't seen happy gilmore do yourselves a favor and check out the adam sandler that we all fell in love with and still root for to this day even though he's probably not coming back well, that's us looking back, and now we're going to look forward to this weekend in theaters is a new film called The Witch. I had the pleasure of seeing this movie a couple weeks ago, and it is just as terrifying as the name would imply. I also got to sit down with director-writer Robert Eggers, who pretty much had this thing from scratch. It was his pet project, his dream work, and he got to realize it first at Sundance and then on a wide release like this weekend. So we're going to play you guys a short clip of that interview right now, and you can check out the full 15-minute clip online on Collider's YouTube channel later on today. Go ahead and roll it. 
seems like something that's very personal to you because when you go, when you watch this movie, kids, you're going to feel like you're in the 1630s, which is 60 years. You know, this family uh, is more vulnerable. I mean, you know, like like this, they are just so much more vulnerable. It, it's like it, what's really crazy about this period. It's like a short amount of time when it was almost like the Middle Ages in North America. I mean, their house there is has dirt floors. Their walls are made of like clay and dung. You know, I mean, it's primitive primitive it's scary it's a lot like my first studio out here in la i mean and you know because when i see this family when we meet them it's you feel horrible for them because they're pretty much if you had the mayflower hit plymouth rock they felt like they were like on the next boat like they got yeah. over there pretty quickly and as soon as they're in this community they feel the need to leave because they're so passionate about their beliefs and their convictions that they don't fit in with anyone else that is in that town so then it's just them forging on their own and like you said they settle next to a forest that just looks so creepy and scary and you know there's got to be something going wrong in there yeah indeed well uh you know what's something that was really interesting is that uh, the real world and the fairy tale world in the 17th century were the same thing. And like, you know, people re- like everybody, everybody knew that witches were real. Like, it's not like if you call someone a witch, that meant something like really specific. Like people really thought if I say you're a witch, that you are a fairy tale ogress. Like you are capable of like stealing children and cutting them up into bits and flying on sticks, uh, you know, and consorting with the devil. It's and this not was... that much of a stretch for me, but, <laughs> but this is, but it, but it was, you know, it was dead serious. So, uh, you know, the idea is if I can really bring you back to the 17th century when witches existed, like you can believe in her the way, you know, the way they did as a given, you know, she's as real as trees, as rocks, is dirt like you know she's the real deal that was the impeccably groomed and exceptionally talented robert eggers make sure you guys check out his new film the witch in theaters wide release this weekend and the full interview is going to be available on collider's youtube channel later on today now with all that out of the way we tease at the top of the show that we're going to have some announcements about the crew and what's going on with us here and man are we excited to bring that to you right now joining us on the panel is from canada john (laughs) campia all the way from the great white north ladies and gentlemen it's good to be here so yes we do have um we have a, a couple of announcements to make here, and uh, they're they're fairly significant ones too. So buckle in, here we go. Um, the first announcement: uh, a couple of years ago, I, I, some of you have heard me tell the story before, but I really want to lay the groundwork here. A couple of years ago, uh, I was looking at expanding the uh, movie talk team a little bit, and to my surprise, one of the guys who gave me a call and said they were interested in coming on board was uh, this jackass sitting beside me. <laughs> and so uh, the aforementioned jackass gave me a call, and I said, well, that's interesting. I said, let's get together and talk. And one of my apprehensions uh, to him was, I said, look, you got a really good thing going with uh, Schmoes No. And um, I-, I don't know if this is the right move for you, blah, blah. But uh, after a lot of, uh, well, we'll call it what it is, begging, um, a lot of late night phone calls showing up outside my bedroom window with a ghetto blaster over his John, head. John Cusack. <laughs> pulling his, jo- his best John Cusack. No, we, we decided, yeah, let's give this a shot. But even then, one of the things I said to Christian at the time, and you'll remember this, I said, what you got to be prepared for, though, is if we start to do this, at some point down the line, we're going to have to look at amalgamating and merging in what Schmoes does with what Movie Talk does because identity lines are going to start to get blurred. And over the following couple of years, every once in a while, we would sit down and I'd say, you know, maybe we're going to have to start thinking about this more because as we kept growing, because at the time, I think we we're getting like 20,000 views an episode of Movie Talk. Now we're over 100,000 views now. So as that was growing, started saying, I think we're going to need to look at this. Now, as when we came over to Collider and Complex, a new opportunities availed themselves uh, to me, with having partners that were interested in my train of thought, which was, we need to make Schmoes a part of what we're doing at Movie Talk. We need to make Schmoes a part of Collider, and this needs to happen. And you know, and I would talk to Mark and Christian. I'd say, you know, this is great that you guys are couch hopping and going from set to set, but I really feel like you guys need a home. I feel like you need a set that is yours, something that you know you're not coming in. I think you deserve it. I think your fans deserve it. And I think it's time we make this happen. So a couple of months ago, uh, we started some discussions uh, between you guys and between Complex. And Complex have been fantastic partners in all of this. And uh, I've, this is an idea that I've had for years and that I've been working on really hard for the last couple of months. And I'm very excited to say that the Schmoes No Show is returning. Uh, and it is returning as Collider Presents 
the Schmoes No Show, and they will be building a permanent set. We're going to have a permanent set for them here in the Collider Studios. I have been uh, frustrated, infuriated, and impatient with how long it's taken to get this done, but we got it done, and I'm super stoked about it. And guys, why don't you talk about it a little bit? Oh, man, we're super excited. And again, to thanking you because you were ab absolutely instrumental in making this all happen. And he's not lying. He's said many times, we have to make schmoes part of what we're doing and it just made sense like we when we were done with phase five we just we wanted to make sure that we had the right home um and it just it just makes sense to do it here complex has been amazing with the fact that we're going to be able to have our own set and for you guys out there who are been following the, sh the, the show for a long time uh, a lot of the crew is coming back um, most of the crew is coming back and there will be there will be announcements as far as who exactly when the actual date is when we appear as well too well this is all news to me but it's very <laughs> exciting um, I've been on the road for a little while but my god we have been working so hard behind the scenes and we know how frustrating it's been to all of our fans just waiting for okay what's the next phase what's going on here phase six is going to be here guys the live experience that you've come to know and love from me and Christian and the whole crew is going to be here we are going to have our house at Collider Presents. I finally have a roof over my head and our studio where we do all our movie reviews. Everything is Collider Presents. Schmoes, no. We are so excited to have our YouTube channel branded as part of Collider. And it, being in this great family, being able to work with all of you guys in such close proximity day in and day out now, it makes so much sense to not do. And I'm so thrilled that we're here. And we have a lot of exciting stuff going on in other realms of Collider. Uh, but there's more. Yeah, there uh, is more. There's, there's a very significant piece of this puzzle that we're going to be putting is. in here. Now, there's a few things that you, if you guys are subscribed to the Schmoes channel, what you will see on the Schmoes reviews and any video that we ever put up on the Schmoes, it will be Collider Presents. It's not just that show. And there will be three brand new shows that will appear on this channel. Um, those three shows, one of those shows will be trailer reviews. We're going to be doing a lot of trailer reviews here to get more and more uh, as the trailers come out. There's so many. We have so many uh, personalities here that we're going to be part of these trailer reviews. The second are more commentary. We're going to do at least two a month. And, and we're going to finish Star Wars. We promise. Definitely going to finish Star Wars. <laughs> we're going to do The Room. We're going to do it all. It's going to be something that is going to happen at least twice a month. And that's where you guys come in. You have to start now as far as telling us which ones you want us to do commentary. Now, third, the third announcement, the third big show is the one that I'm super excited about because this also is a story that I was driving here uh, one day. We months were, ago. Months yeah. ago. We we're pitching ideas. And, and I remember I'm driving and I go, well, wait a minute. That makes a lot of sense. So I called John from the car and I go, I have something for you that I think you're going to love. I got to let's let's sit down. And let's talk yep. about this. So we sat down and I said, what about our own weekly Schmodown movie trivia game show. And it's going to be like our version. It's like it's like our UFC for movie trivia to where we'll have all the personalities. And if He knew to throw in the phrase UFC with me. Yeah. That, I had that, to throw that, that, that me, um, me and Dennis on board. And probably. it made sense because we've been doing, if you haven't watched our Ultimate Schmodown uh, that we did on Schmoes, it was a show that just really worked and the fans really liked it. But we're going to do, it's just think about it. John Campia versus Andy Signore. You're gonna have. You could have John Schnepp, you know, versus Dennis Zhang. You could have Jeremy Johns versus Chris Stuckman. The it is it is the possibilities are endless. And again, that comes to you guys. Who do you want to see? It's going to be weekly. It's going to be there's going to be champions. There's going to be tag teams. It's going to be something that is huge, and it's gonna be a lot of fun. And we need you guys to be part of it every week. It's going to be such a fun experience. Christian and I are going to host it most days unless we're battling maybe against another team. Maybe we're battling against each other. Brothers become enemies. We cannot wait to bring you guys all the exciting stuff we have in store and to get to announce it here. It just It's like a nice purging of all this information we've had to keep secret, been working on behind closed doors and now it's out there in the public. Schmoes, Schmoville, welcome to Collider. Collider meet Schmoville. You guys are going to be really fast friends. Yeah, again guys, I can't emphasize this enough how, how long this is something that I personally have wanted to make happen. You know, I've been a fan of Mark and Christian for a long time, uh, and to have them Campy. And I will say also, as far as John Campy goes, our first guest when the when the Schmoes No Show returns will be John Campy. Apparently, yes. Yes, <laughs> and I'd love to see. I want to see you battle Finstock in the Ultimate Schmo Now. <laughs> Finstock. <laughs> That strudel eating, weak ass tweet tweeting, candy ass sucker. Yeah, anytime. Bring it on. I like Finstock, actually. All right, so that is uh, announcement number one. 
which leads us in to announcement number two. Now, uh, many of you guys will remember uh, about eight months ago now, uh, I had I had resigned from uh, from AMC theaters at the time, and. I didn't know what I was going to do next when I had resigned from AMC theaters. I had a lot of opportunities and, and a lot of ideas and goals and ambitions. But um, one of the things that became apparent to me after I had announced that I was leaving, I let AMC know I was leaving, was that AMC was most likely not going to keep movie talk around uh, or AMC movie news around. And one of the reasons, one of the many reasons, but one of the re things that appealed to me about coming to Complex and to Collider was that I recognized right away that there would be opportunities to keep some of this team together. At the time, it was some of the team, but I was able to, to find a way working with Complex and with AMC together to find a way to keep most of the team together. And while there are many great reasons to come and work with Complex and many great reasons to come and work with Collider, uh, one of the things that really did appeal to me personally was the idea of not, not trying to save the jobs of people here, but this is such a special team. It's such a special team, and I felt it was like, an unbelievable miscarriage of internet justice, if you will, uh, that this team not be kept together. I thought it was just too special. And the notion of working with Complex and that opened up the doors that we could keep, at least at the time, a core of that team together, and as it turns out, the majority of the team together, was just the icing on the cake. And that's one of the reasons why, uh, one of the many, many great reasons why I decided to come to Complex. And, and we eventually moved things here. And special thanks again to Complex and to AMC for allowing that and making that happen. Um, but one of the things that has become a, really apparent, and a lot of you guys have noticed online too, is that this job, uh, for me, has kind of become a 14, 15, 16 hour a day job. Uh, it has become all consuming. You know, once we were broadcasting two shows a week and now we're broadcasting about 17 shows a week. Um, and our team has grown and we have a lot of people, both, you know, full time, part time, occasional, stuff like that. And it really has become. Uh, an all-encompassing, all-owning thing. Now, for any of you who follow me on social media, you know that uh, I really enjoy new challenges and I encourage people to constantly face new challenges, go out and climb new mountains. The problem is when you have no time uh, to go out and even buy the hiking boots, let alone go on those hikes or take those new challenges, then life becomes a little bit stagnant. Um, I have been doing this particular job in various iterations for almost seven years now. And in the last number of years, there have been opportunities or challenges that I have had that I haven't been able to engage with simply because I haven't had the time uh, to do it. So I am here to announce today that uh, back in January, I notified uh, Complex and Collider and the team uh, that I have resigned uh, from Complex and Collider. Now, one of the reasons I felt uh, comfortable about resigning was because this situation is a lot different than the situation at AMC. When I left AMC, it meant the team was falling apart. But with Complex and, and the great leadership here at Complex, um, one of the things that I wanted to make sure of was that we had a really solid, firm foundation. And a part of getting that firm foundation solidified was getting this new deal uh, with the Schmoes really put in place and put intact. I didn't want to make this announcement until we had this deal done, signed, and delivered. Um, you know, so I notified uh, the complex last month that I was going to be resigning to uh, go and take on new challenges and new things. Maybe me and Schnepper doing something. I don't know. I got a few things. I got a few things on the burner. I will let you know about those uh, in the future. Um, but like I said, this is a job I've been doing for almost seven years. And I just find that I do not have the time to take on new challenges and conquer new mountains that I see in front of me that I really want to do. Never has this particular team been in more solid and stable shape. Never has this particular team had better leadership besides myself, better leadership in place to make sure that what we have built here, what I started seven years ago, will continue on and continue to grow. We just have a great trajectory going right now. Um, and you know, as a great tribute to, to Complex, you know, very few places when you say you're going to leave they very few places will allow you to name your own successor and so when they came to me and asked who's the next guy to run this and i said it's dennis zen dennis zen is the smartest guy i know uh dennis zen is uh the most level-headed guy i know dennis zen knows this 
entire production. He knows this outfit. He knows this crew. Everybody here respects Dennis just to the teeth, and he is simply the best guy in the world. Uh, so I told him that the next guy to run this, the guy who will take this to the next level, to the next stage, is Dennis Zen. Uh, we got the deal done with Mark and Christian, which couldn't be a better support system. Uh, for Dennis, we've got our core team is all still here, uh, which is going to support Dennis and everything else. And you guys will be supportive to Dennis. And so, um, yeah, I, that's one other thing. What, and, oh, there is one other thing. Yes, yes. Yeah. I almost forgot to mention. <laughs> I almost forgot to mention. Uh, I am not, uh, by the way, I am done. My next Friday is my official last day, although I will be here for the uh for the Oscar festivities. So I will be here for the Oscar broadcast, but uh, I will still be popping up. I am still going to continue for the time being to be a part of Jedi Council, and I'm still going to continue to come in and be a guest on Heroes as well. So I'm still going to be doing those two things. So you're going to see my face around here uh, once in a while, checking in to make sure these guys aren't burning down my house. Um, and um, that uh, that's my announcement. So thank you to all of you guys for all the support you have, not just given me, but given this team through all the unbelievable ups and some of the few downs that we have had. You guys have been supportive of us. I am counting on you to continue to be supportive of this incredible team that will continue on this work that we started, that Dennis and I got rolling uh, the ball like years ago. We know you guys will support it. Uh, so thank you very much. And uh, that is my announcement. We, uh, we want to let you guys know we're going to take live Twitter questions. Yeah. Um, we're going to do some live Twitter questions. Let's have everybody relax. Uh, we actually are going to be taking live Twitter questions. We know. Look, I'm looking at the chat board. There's a few comments, gentlemen. People are going to want to ask questions. Yeah. People are asking stuff, and uh, we're happy to do as much as we can within the confines of this show. We're going to do a couple mailbags, and then we're going to get on with your live Twitter questions. The gatekeeper today is John Campia. So yep. I wonder what people are going to be asking about. Let's get to some questions because, you know, we're still four boys who love talking movies here. First up is the Tiki Man. Antique Norwazi writes, Hey guys, was wondering what y'all's favorite Easter eggs shown in movies are. Mine is all the hidden stuff in Cloverfield, and I'm excited to see what they put in the sequel. Thanks, and keep up the great work. John? We'll start with you. Your favorite Easter egg that you've ever seen in a movie. Ah, my favorite Easter egg is the ones that you miss. Like the Easter egg that you missed at a pre-production meeting when I said, I'm not going to take mailbag yeah. questions. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. Those are some really, uh, those are solid. I knew it. We're in good hands. I knew that was yeah. guys. <laughs> what the hell, Mark? I'm you running the ship job. just fine. Hi, Mark. <laughs> Christian, let's go to you. <laughs> Damn it! I was thinking about it. Um, okay, here you want me to kick? No, you off? I was gonna, no, I was going to go Man of Steel. Actually, I liked what they did in Man of Steel with you know with with a lot of the the Wayne stuff and even LexCorp, all all that stuff. I thought was was done really well. I was thinking about that earlier this morning. Yeah, my all time. <laughs> thank you. You're welcome for doing your homework. You thank you. My favorite all time <laughs> Easter egg is actually in Indiana Jones in the Last Crusade. And if you blink, you're going to miss it. But in the scene when him and uh, Elsa Elsa Schneider are down in under that that old church that's now a library and they're looking for the knight's tomb he's walking by with a torch and there's all these like writings and pictures and murals on the wall that are kind of faded and she's asking him what's that one and he says that's the ark of the covenant and she's like are you sure and he just says pretty sure love 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 that clip because he was also in writers of the lost ark get it dennis uh, uh mine would be probably from back to the future when they meet at the twin pines mall uh <coughs> doc and uh, <coughs> And Marty, and then when he goes back to 1955, he he uh, ends up going into DeLorean and, and knocking over one of the twin pines. And then when they come back to the future, they they see that you see the mall. It's the Lone Pines Mall. That's right. Yeah, he also made some comment about how old man Peabody had some crazy idea about breeding pine trees. All right, thank you for that question. Up next is Stephen Allegri. And he writes, hey, guys, love the show a ton, and I try to watch every single day. Well, thank you. My question is, when I rent a movie, where does my money go? Does a part of it go to the studio that makes the movie, or does it all go to the provider I rent from? It would make me feel a bit better to know that my money might be going back to the creators of whatever movie I am seeing. Uh, I'm probably not the authority on where movie rentals go, though I did apply for a number of jobs yeah. at a movie rental location as a youth. Dennis, did you, A, ever work at a video store, and B, do you know now when people buy them either on iTunes or they stream them on Netflix or they buy them through some pay service, where does that money go? 
The money goes, it's split. It's b- between the provider and, and the studio who, who made the movie. I mean, something like if you rent a movie or buy a movie on, let's say, an Xbox One, that movie gets split up. I mean, it's different percentages for different movies and different studios. The one thing I, I would say is in terms of the actual creators, like you're talking about the directors or the actors, unless you're a big time, like a Christopher Nolan, Steven Spielberg, or a big time actor like Tom Cruise, you're not seeing any of that money. And there's a reason why all these actors and directors get gross points on stuff because if, you know due to hollywood accounting you can <laughs> you can your, your movie can make tons and tons of money and you could get nothing if you get net points like i remember the biggest time like the first time i realized that was when the original uh tim burton batman came out uh, it was a huge huge success and i remember reading in a, in a newspaper article a year later they're like oh yeah the, the movie's still in the red i'm like that's such bullshit. There's no <laughs> way that movie didn't make money. And it's just a fuzzy math accounting that they do in order to not pay out certain people. Christian, when you were 13 years old, you made a movie called Lothar. Have you ever <laughs> seen a true. penny based on that film? No, oh, I, I, I actually no, I actually owe people money for that movie. <laughs> Um, so, no, n- n- that'll never happen. That'll never happen, no. and uh, we thank you guys for your mailbag questions. And like we promised, look, there's a big announcement. There's a lot of cool stuff going on here. There's a lot of interesting stuff that have been developments that are brand new to you guys. So we do want to save some time right now to take your live Twitter questions. You can still sneak one in. It's going to be at Collider Video. Tweet us. Let us know what you guys are wondering about. We'll try to get to as many as we possibly can. John, have you picked one out? to lead us off. What I have done is developed a new appreciation for Ashley Move and how well she can pick out these questions because yeah, I know, right? This is harder than it looks. All right, I'm going to I'm going to pick out a, a couple here for you guys here. Uh, 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 ben Hyde is asking, uh, what are you going to do next? I'm assuming that's directed at me. I am sure you will be great in your next adventure. Well, obviously. Um, <laughs> uh, well, well I, I can't. Uh, well, first of all, I uh, it's a plugging time. I do have a new book coming out called The Pride. Keep your eye open for that. Uh, but other than that, I can't really say what it is I'm going to be uh, doing next at this point, but uh, keep your eyes open. I will. Uh, I will address that as soon as I can. Uh, Magic, what? Mike. Magic Ed Ed the trainer nice. writes. Uh, but John, okay, uh, will sh- uh, oh a bunch of people are asking this, so I'll just say this: Will Schnepp stay on the show, uh, and who will disagree with Harloff's uh, hackneyed Star Wars theories? Uh, well, first of all, it should be noted that many of Christian Star Wars theory, as as ridiculous as they sound at the time, uh, usually end up being correct. So uh, keep that in mind. Uh, with Schnepp, Schnepp is in London right now, so I'm not going to speak for Schnepp at all. He'll he'll address things when he gets back. Um, Cameron Belgrade writes. Will John Campia still be on the Star Wars commentaries? Um, I mean, we got a seat I'll, for you. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I'll, we, yeah, I'll yeah. still. Yeah, we still gotta do Empire yeah, and Jedi. John, yeah. John's gonna be around a lot. I mean, we're definitely, like I said, Jedi Council and, and heroes and all that stuff. And I think that the other thing that kind of got lost in the um, when we're talking about as far as movie talk goes now too, because Dennis is gonna be, is is gonna be on the panel a lot too, hosting on Fridays. Like you yeah. know, this Mark and I will be hosting from Monday through Thursday. I think Mark's gonna be doing m- Monday and Tuesday. I'll be hosting on Wednesday and if, Thursday. Whoever gets here first wins. Right. So it's it's <laughs> and it's it's the team. John's absolutely right. Is that this team? that John assembled is, I think, top notch and probably the best of what we're doing. So what I would say is wait to see what we got coming because they're gonna we have a lot of great things. The new shows, this show, everything. This show is going to be just bigger and better things uh, from this day forward. I look at the situation like like I know John's wearing a Batman shirt, but it's kind of like John's Nick Fury, where he assembled the Avengers. <laughs> we're gonna poke one of your eyes out. It's gonna have to be aesthetically pleasing and make sense. But it's like we have this team. We're gonna go off on missions, but there's always gonna be. We're always gonna have a place for John if he ever wants to come back and do whatever he wants to do here at Collider. You you still have the sweet office, man. Right. You got the walking treadmill. And Dennis is getting that. Dennis is. I'm <laughs> yes. sure Dennis will let you crash there once. He, in a he while. might. He might. Yeah. If Ann ever puts me out for if I ever take yeah. Ann off. <laughs> enough that I need a place to sleep for the night. I'm sure Dennis will let me go in there and sleep on the couch. I look forward to me doing my like work in my yeah. little cubby got, hole here and John just walks up yeah. whenever he wants just grabs my I, I got, got a bathrobe yeah. on. I got dibs I got dibs on that treadmill. <laughs> All right. Um Ishra I, I'm not even gonna pretend to try to pronounce your name. Um uh, Ishra de Kribak 
John, please tell me you'll be here for the Batman v Superman Dawn of Justice review. I have a hard time imagining me not wanting to come right. back to be a part of that review. You know, I was thinking Definitely. about that because we'll probably definitely do a spoiler review for B versus S oh, as yeah, well. Yeah. So, like, the, you've the, the, we've been so, through so much with this movie and announcing yeah. like news and what's not mm -hmm. news, and like at one point it was going to be two separate movies, and we've already seen half of them. So, like, you you probably should show up for that. I I have a hard time. Like me and Drew McWeeny, we'll be here. Yeah. All <laughs> Um, I'm getting a in lot. Costume. Me and Drew, buddy. I am getting a lot of questions I see in the YouTube sure. chat board as far as, far as the, run out. Yeah, as far as the as far as the Schmoes crew. Like I said, I can tell you who's coming back. I, as far as yeah. the Schmoes crew goes, so people, everyone that's coming back would be Ken Napsock, JTE, Josh McCuga, Mark Riley, Cody Ace, uh, Finstock, Finstock will be the back. Beard mask. Yes, uh, Miri Jedekin will be back. Um, as well as Sasha Pearl Raver and my missing Tiffany him? Smith. Tiffany Smith is coming back, and Alicia Malone will not be returning to the main show, but uh, she will definitely be here guesting and stuff too. So that's everybody that's coming back, unless I forgot anybody. No, I'm just impressed you can actually make sense of what's going on in the yeah. chat board right now. It's pretty impressive to watch. It's flying pretty fast. It's like an asteroid field. John, do you have maybe one or two more tweets that you've noticed or any other bits of information that we think uh, the kids should know about? Uh, no, nothing that I, I've looked up here. Uh, just to say, you know, I, I, I tend to be repetitive and that's okay. I, uh, again, thank you to everybody for uh, for all the support you have shown me. And I and, and I know you continue to, to support me in the stuff I do, but I really am I'm also counting on all you guys to support the team here uh, and support them in what they're doing. These guys all work, whether it's Dennis or Mark or Christian or guys like David Griffin or Ashley and everybody else here on the team, Wendy and Jonathan, everybody here works so hard because they love what they do for you guys. They, they work their tails off because they believe that the audience of Movie Talk and Collider News here, they believe the audience is worth it. And they just believe in you guys a lot. They want to give to you guys as much as they can. And I will really trust that you guys will continue to support them. And uh, as you continue to support me and, and the things that I am going to be doing next. So uh, thank you again. Thank you to Mark and Christian for getting this deal done. Uh, just in the nick of time, by the way. <laughs> thank you to Dennis for, for accepting the responsibility and the huge burden of taking over this thing. Uh, special thanks to all of our team that we have here. And again, thank you to you guys. And uh, But I'm, well, again, I'm around until the end of next week. So uh, it's not, I'm not running uh, off in the sunset yet. Yes. Well, yeah. Might you still be around Jedi Council yes, Heroes? Yes, still Jedi Council yeah. Heroes. And some commentary, some yeah. reviews, stuff yep, like that. You'll see me pop up. Might even get rid of them. Don't yeah. worry. It's like Van Wilder. I'm not, we're not going to do a show where like you announce this and then we don't know how to follow you on Twitter. So right. we'll get to you in just a yes. sec. Yeah. Yes. Dennis, I saw you bring a waterbed into John's office this morning. <laughs> yes. Where can the kids <laughs> find you online? Well, I mean, before I get into that, I, I do want to say something. John, you know, I want to thank you. On, on behalf of myself and I'm sure everyone else for all that you've done for us, for building this crew and keeping the team together after what happened with AMC and moving on to Complex. And you've been so supportive of myself and everyone else here. I, I just want you to know that we really appreciate it. And, and we're sad that you're leaving, but we're also glad that you, you're gonna go on and do things that you wanna do, that you're passionate about and we'll support you in that. And, and you're, you're gonna still be around. So, we'll, we'll, and we're always going to watch UFC. We're just still watching UFCs like <laughs> yeah. every other Saturday yes. night. Thanks, thanks, man. I appreciate uh, that. You can follow, follow me on Twitter at Think Hero on Instagram, Dennis.TZNG. Kristen, George Harloff, the star and director of Lothar. Right. Where can the kids find you? Well, if you're not already subscribed to the Schmoes No YouTube channel, you should be. Um, and we are going, you'll be able to find me. Like I said, I'll be hosting next, I think starting next week, right? Start, oh, two weeks. I will be hosting on Wednesdays and Thursdays this show, be on this show about four times a week. And you can find me and this guy and and this guy, Collider Jedi Council, Thursdays with Tiffany Smith as well. Hashtag Collider Jedi Council. Get your questions on the air. And lastly, in this comment section, who do you want to see battle in the Schmodown <laughs> movie trivia? Now, remember, like I said, we're going to have rankings. There's going to be contenders. When It's going to be up to you guys who you want to see. Who are the best people out there? The movie knowledge. Who, what's your dream matchup? Comment below. Uh, that Jedi Council show sounds like a lot of fun. It's Maybe decent. I should, you should, you should do it once in a while. <laughs> yeah. I'll be the St. Louis Funny Bone this weekend, guys. Please save your Schmoes Collider questions till after the show is over. You can follow me on Twitter at Mark Ellis Live. And I'd be remiss if I didn't turn the end of the show over to Mr. John Campia. Uh, of course you guys can follow me uh, continue to follow me on facebook and on twitter simply at john campia and uh it has been a pleasure oh like oh that's right you wanted me to end it to you because when you you're still here <laughs>
Go home. <laughs> <laughs> it's over. <laughs> Hey guys, if you like this video, (laughs) click the thumbs up button. Also, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. It'll help you stay up to date with everything we've got going on here at Collider.